I'm Hashni Anapurpa Munizami. What I had like and why I like this course because now I clearly can understand how our Malaysia economy will build up since pre-colonization period until now and moreover, this course shows the correct way how to get the real data such as import and export whether it is in Malaysia or in other country. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Hi, I'm Ashraf. The reason why I like this course because of economy is my passion. And I have a lot of information about the Malaysian economy like the Malaysian economy policies, what are the most got that Malaysia had import and export and the input in all of the Malaysians plans. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Pakaruddin bin Muhammad Azhar. I like this course because this is my first time I was exposed to a lot of information as well as real data about the economy in Malaysia. And also, I really like when my lecturer show the real data from the Dawson website source. I am Nur Saleha Iliana and I like this course because for the first time in my life, I could gain more data and information about economy by exploring DOSA, MITI and other resources. Thank you. I am Nur Sawadihanis and I like this course because I can gain more knowledge about Malaysia economic and get to know accurate data in the right website such as DOSA. Thank you. Hello. My name is Aina Fakira binti Muhammad Anwar. I like this course because I can study not only Malaysian economy but also another country. Uh, for example, I just know what the factor uh, cause of the change in population in Malaysia such as birth rate, death rate and health. Besides that, I also can uh, know how to get the information in the right website. Thank you. I am Nisha Kira binti Mama Azman. I like this course because I can learn about the Malaysian economy uh, in more detail. And this course uh, was revealed to me how to take and use the data from the docent. And I am very happy to be part of in this class. Thank you. My name is Nur Shaza Hazwani binti Mama Rosli with the metric number A180832. My self-reflection on this subject, I love how Dr. Shukri explained to us about the economic growth, especially during this pandemic. He also taught us and showed us the data of Economic Malaysia by the Department of Statistics Malaysia website. It gave me a lot of information that I could use it in my further studies. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Muhammad Afriham bin Azizan. A180867, I like this subject because the lecturer provide a lot of new knowledge about the economy of our country, such as the manufacturer, trade, and the main income of the, our country. Among the topic I like is about the agriculture. Thank you. First, how COVID-19 was detected in Malaysia? The first COVID-19 COVID, the first COVID-19 case in Malaysia was confirmed 25 January 2020 involving tourists from China arriving in Johor. Then several local cluster had emerged in March 2020. The largest cluster at that time was associated with the Jemaah Tablet gathering held in Sri Petaling, Kuala Lumpur. By the end of March 2020, the cumulative number of confirmed COVID-19 infection, infection cases in the country had increased from under 30 cases at the beginning of the month to 2,000 cases and above and had been reported in every state and federal territory in the country. Next, what was the immediate measure by the government? Uh, these are the steps that the government has taken in dealing with this epidemic. First, the former Prime Minister announced the Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan uh, PKP at L stage. On March 16, the former uh, Prime Minister Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin announced that the government had decided to implement the PKP from March 18 to 31 nationwide. This movement control order involved firstly a comprehensive ban on movement and public gathering throughout the country, including uh, religious, sporting, social and cultural activities. And then, PKP continue and the implementation of PKPD. PKP this phase is start by limiting the operating hours of business premise, restaurant, food store, petrol station and several other sectors. Other than that, the holistic framework of 
bahawa prihatin nasional Malaysians from all walk of life are affected by the epidemic COVID-19 will receive and can apply for various grants and initiatives outlined in the economic stimulus package announced by the government. Lastly, synergy of government, private and NGO cooperation. In the face of crisis, it does, it does not only, only involve effort from the government alone. Every layer of society, private company and NGO also play a big role in breaking the chain of this epidemic. Several hotels, for example, have offered to the government to be used as the quarantine center. Next, we move to what is the situation of COVID-19 in the beginning stage. Firstly, in March 2020, COVID-19 cases were increased slowly until there is a religious event took place at Petaling, Kuala Lumpur. This issue leads to Malaysia gets highest number of COVID-19 cases recorded in Southeast Asia. On 16 March 2020, the number of cases increased more than 553 cases and our Prime Minister announced MCO. On 17 March 2020, Malaysia confirmed two COVID-19 related deaths, which is one is from Kuching and another one is from Johor Bahru. Next, on 18th March, MCO was took place and people are restricted from travel to other states. However, the cases were still high, so the government extended MCO until 14 April 2020. On 6 April 2020, two new classes were formed, which is 83 cases from a religious gathering at Kuching and 88 cases from a wedding at Bandar Bangi. Lastly, new classes were founded in Sendaya Negeri Simblan, which is 39 cases, and MOH reported 29 virus clusters throughout Malaysia on 14 April 2020. Next, let's move to the number of COVID-19 cases in Malaysia. As we can see here, the cases increased slowly since 9 March 2020 until it reached 30 January 2021, which is 5,728 cases were recorded. Then, the number of cases declined again in 29 March 2021, which is 941 cases. The MCO helps to bring down the number of cases rapidly. However, in the third quarter of 2021, new variant, which is Delta, spread fastly in Malaysia, which is contributed 24,599 cases were recorded on 26 August 2021. And this is the highest number of cases in Malaysia. Currently, the number of cases declined again until it reached 13,104 cases because of the number of vaccinated people were increased. Next, the number of deaths also increases day by day. The highest number of deaths recorded in Malaysia were 592 deaths on 11 September 2021. In current situation, the number of deaths declined to 278 deaths in 26 September 2021 because the number of serious cases were declined, which is most patients are affected with COVID-19 are in stage 1 to 3 and they are more easily to treat and recover. In addition, the total highest number of deaths were recorded in Selangor, which is 8,801 deaths. Next, this graph shows total number of cases were recorded by every state in Malaysia. As we can see, the highest number of cases were recorded in Selangor, which is more than 600,000, and the lowest number of cases were recorded is in Perlis, which is 3,091 cases. However, the total number of cases in Malaysia were recorded until 17 September 2021 was more than 2 million. Even though the number of cases is still high in every state, the COVID-19 cases also starts to decline compared to June, July, and August in 2021. This is because the number of vaccinations increased, MCO, strict SOPs rules, and the improvement in the medical industry. Next, what is the measures taken by the government? Firstly, border control, which is people from other countries not allowed to enter Malaysia, such as from Singapore. Secondly, movement control, which is well known as MCO, where people cannot go to other states. Third, moratorium on debts repayments where government gives relaxation to the people from paying their debts on time. In addition, compulsory usage of my sajatra by everyone. Next, provide vaccination service for the eligible and government increase the number of vaccination centers. The sixth one, health screening at all point of entry such as swab tests in airports. Next is COVID-19 funds and lastly, Banton Kas COVID-19 established recently to those in need. Thank you. Uh, in 16 March 2020, the Prime Minister Tan Sri Mujidah Yassin declared the PKP effective from 18 March to 31 March nationwide to curb the spread of COVID-19. The, the PKP covers a comprehensive ban on public movement and gathering throughout the country including religious, sport, social and cultural activities. Okay, In 18 March 2020, PKP comes into force. To reduce uh, the infection rate of COVID-19, the government has implemented a number of SOP that need to be carried out. Among them, uh, avoid the three C's, crowded place, 
confined space and close conversation. Practice the 3W. Wash hands frequently with water and soap. Uh, wearing face masks are strongly encouraged in public areas or if symptomatic. One side and other for the following in line with more uh, MOH advisors. Um, like avoid shaking hands or touching others. Practice good coughing and sneezing. Etiquette. Seek yearly treatment if symptomatic. Stay at home and avoid from visiting others. Regularly clean and disinfect. Commonly touch surface in common areas. Okay, beside that, uh, a uh, total ban on mass movement and gathering across the country, including religious, sport, social, and cultural activities. To enforce this ban, all houses of food, sheet, and business premises must be closed except uh, supermarket, public market, grocery stores, and convenience stores that sell daily necessity. Okay, second, a comprehensive restriction on all travel of nation abroad. For those who have just returned from abroad, they are required to undergo a medical examination and perform voluntarily. Voluntary quarantine for 14 days. Okay, third, a restriction on the entry of of all foreign tourists and visitors into the country. Okay, fourth, closure closure of all kindergarten, government and private school, including day school, boarding school, international schools, tahfi centers, and other primary, secondary, and private university educational institutions. Okay, fifth, a closure of all public and private higher education institution, as well as skills training insti institute throughout the country. Okay, see, closure of all government and private premises except those involved with essential service to the country, namely water, electricity, energy, telecommunication, postal transformation, transportation, irrigation, oil, gas, food, and so on. Okay. The effect of COVID-19 include the first occurrence of unemployment. Unemployment in Malaysia rose to 772.9 people at a rate of 4.8% in December 2020. By economic sector, the working population in the service sector continue to record an increasing trend, especially in wholesale and retail trade activities, human, health and social work, information and communication and education. Okay, employment in tourism related industries such as accommodation and food service, transportation and storage and our entertainment entertainment and recreation continue to decline reflecting the pandemic impact on the industry. Employment in the manufacturing sector continue to record positive growth in December 2020. The agricultural and mining and quarrying sector remaining remained in a negative trend for the fifth month while the construction sector also recorded month on month decline. Labor market conditions in December 2020, which were still affected by the health crisis and economic impact, slowed the momentum of the labor market recovery. Thus, the labor market during the month remained competitive with the number of labor force increasing by 27.8 people to 15.99 million people. Okay, uh, for the second is tourism sector. In the year 20, 2019, the total tourist arrival in Malaysia were recorded at 26.1 uh, million, but it has fallen by 21.8 to 4.25 as of mid-2020. It is acknowledged that the tourism sector in Malaysia plays an important role in boosting economic growth by promoting foreign spending on goods and services in Malaysia. If the number of tourists continuously decrease, some of the tourism industry will be forced to shut down due to unbearable losses and unable to pay workers' salaries. At the same time, uh, other non-essential sectors were also forced to cease uh, their operation during the MCO. For instance, the economic activities in the manufacturing and construction sector were put on hold in order to control the spread of COVID-19 in Malaysia. The third is a Malaysia or United, United States foreign exchange rate. Malaysia's uh, exchange rate for March 2019 is 4.8. 4.08 ringgit in exchange for USD and it has depreciated to 4.26 ringgit in exchange for 1 USD in July 2020. Weaker exchange rate will lead to cost push inflation as the cost of imported raw materials are rising. This will impact almost all the sectors, especially the manufacturing sector in Malaysia as most of the machineries are imported from China and Japan. Weaken currency adversely affect uh, the purchasing power of Malaysian Ringgit as more Malaysian Ringgit is required to exchange for the US dollar. 
Okay, now we back to the measure taken by the government. Did it working? Did it success to save economy and people? So we look one by one. For border and movement control, the action are clearly unsuccessful because the first reason is that there are some people who are still stubborn, not stay at home and make movement. It cause positive case always exist and always increase. In addition, weak enforcement from the government make the people not following the SOP. That's why MCO in Malaysia was not successful where the government had enforced the MCO phase 1 and then phase 2 and phase 3. Although many phase of MCO have been performed, but the positive case is always do not show a downward trend of positive case. Malaysian citizens have been forced to stay at home for more than a year and now they had lost their job and poverty rates have increased. Second, the implementation of the moratorium on bank for a long time can help citizens who lose their source of income. The people were able to buy more essential basic necessities during the MCO so they can survive. And this moratorium will not affect the country's economy as banks continue to record a net profit of billion ringgit even in the pandemic COVID-19 season. Next, the usage of my sedatera to detect the movement of individuals when entering a premise so this method is successful to reduce COVID-19 cases. This way is more to detect individuals if the premise visited by the individual exists COVID-19 cases. So this method is very necessary to continue as it will facilitate the search of individuals and preventing measure can be done more to prevent the COVID-19 cases virus from spreading further. It also gives a good impact to the premise with the usage of my sedatera application. They can run it again the operation with the following SOP by the government, which is provide the QR barcode of my sejahtera at the entrance of the premise. So this way working to save the economy and people. Okay, now vaccination. Vaccination measures are seen to be successful, but not to reduce cases. It gives antibody resistant to people if impact with COVID-19. Cases will always be there, but it is to avoid increases that cases. So it is seen to be successful in reducing the number of that because the government has opened many vaccination center to ensure that the people get vaccinated quickly. It could also save the economy because the government has already has allowed individuals who have already completed two doses of vaccine for go working, shopping or vacation. At the same time, premises are also allowed to run if employees have been fully vaccinated so economy can back to the normal. The economic stimulus package was announced on 27 February 2020. The government has taken proactive steps to prepare the uh, to prepare the economic stimulus package to meet the impact of COVID-19 to re-strengthen the country's economic growth. Uh, this stimulus package has three main strategy. Uh, the first one is addressing the impact of COVID-19. The second one catalyzing people centered growth, and the third one is encourage quality investment. Uh, among the specific uh, measures of the economic stimulus package include improving the cash flow of affected businesses, stimulating private consumption and spending as well as intensifying uh, domestic investment activities. Okay, the first uh, of the economic uh, stimulus package is prehating. Prehating was announced on 27 March 2020. The Malaysian government announced the prehating economic stimulus package by injecting an additional 230 billion ringgit into the economy. Uh, the purpose prehatin uh, announced by the Malaysian government to supporting business by mitigating the impact of COVID-19. Of this amount, uh, almost 128 billion ringgit was channeled to protect the welfare of the people, uh, 100 billion ringgit to support businesses, including SME, and 2 billion ringgit to strengthen the country's economy. In addition, family insurance and takafo companies uh, will offer deferment of payment of premiums or contribution for three months for contributors whose sources of income uh, have been affected have been affected by COVID-19. The government has agreed to provide special allowances to doctors, nurses and, and, and other medical staff uh, directly involved uh, in the management and containment of the epidemic. On 6 April 2020, the Malaysian government announced an additional allocation of 10 billion ringgit to further support businesses, particularly SME. The purpose uh, prehating SME Plus uh, announced by the Malaysian government to strengthening the nation economy by promoting quality investment, by leverage on public investment, provide incentive to uh, encourage private investment, cash uh, is is cash flow of businesses assist affected individuals and stimulate demand for the domestic travel and tourism sector. 
This package is designed to find uh, two thirds of the total number of workers in the country to continue to find employment. Under this additional initiative, all companies uh, with local employees earning four thousand ringgit and below will receive uh, wage wage subsidy assistance. The wage subsidy assistance is for three months. is reserved for employers who have registered with SSN or local authorities before 1st January 2020 and registered with SOSO also. Okay, next penjana. Penjana was announced on 5th June 2020. There are three calls under the penjana. The first one is empower people, proper businesses and the lastly stimulate the economy. There are 40 initiatives worth 35 billion ringgit penjana and of the amount Uh, 10 billion ringgit is a direct fiscal injection from the government. For the example, initiative in this package is incentive to employers who provide apprenticeship opportunities to school leavers and graduates at a rate of uh, 600 uh, ringgit per month to address the issue of the young unemployment rate as well as increase the marketability of graduate. Okay, next, uh, kita prihatin. Kita prihatin was announced on 33 September 2020. Uh, kita prihatin package was announced to reduce the burden on the people, help maintain employment and assist businesses especially SME. With a total allocation of 10 billion ringgit, the total kita prihatin will be channeled to the people uh, and businesses through the Grand Class Prihatin, Program uh, Subsidy Upah 2.0 and Bantuan Prihatin National BPN 2.0. Through the kita prihatin package, uh, the government is committed to ensuring that it reaches It reached at the people in need. Permai uh, was announced on 18 January 2021. This package is worth 15 billion ringgit to alleviate uh, the burden of the people affected by the COVID-19 epidemic. The latest assistance package will be implemented through 22 initiatives, uh, and then there are three goals in this package. The first one is combating COVID-19 pandemic, two preserving the welfare of the people, and the last one is supporting business continuity. For the example, under the first goal uh, of combating uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the government has provided additional uh, of one billion ringgit, comprising nearly uh, one uh, comprising nearly 800 million to Ministry of Health, and the rest to the Majlis Keselamatan Majlis Keselamatan Negara, as well as other as well as other agencies involved. The provision of this allocation focuses on the supply of additional reagent and screening kits, as well as PPE equipments, especially to health workers. Pemakasa, pemakasa uh, was announced on 17 March 2021, and then this package is worth uh, 20 billion ringgit uh, to reduce the burden of the people and drive the country's economic growth. And then there are five key focuses, and the first one is controlling the spread of COVID-19. Uh, driving economic recovery, strengthening national competitiveness, ensuring a regional and community inclusion agenda, and the last one is transforming the economy. This package involves a new government fiscal injection of 11 billion ringgit. And in this package, 20 new and existing initiatives will be implemented in various areas and efforts to control COVID-19, besides expanding beneficia- beneficiaries, especially to the B40 group, women, young, and people with disability, or we call it OKU. Pemakasa tambahan was announced on 31 May 2021. The government announced the package with a total amount of 40 billion ringgit to help elevate the challenges faced following in the implementation of MCO 3.0. In the additional empowerment program involves a direct fiscal injection from the government of 5 billion ringgit. There are three goals for this package, the, which is the first one is enhance public health capacity, and the second one is pursue the people's concern agenda, and the last one is support business con- support business sustainability. Okay, now we move to the last pemulih. Pemulih was announced on 28 June 2021. The total value of package is 150 billion ringgit. And in the amount, a total of 10 billion ringgit has been allocated by the government in the form of fiscal injection to help help to help ease the burden of the people in facing this health and economic crisis. And then in this package, the hardcore poor household uh, group will receive an additional 1,300 ringgit Malaysia uh, through COVID-19 special assistance, while B40 and M40 group will receive. 800 and 250 ringgit respectively. Now I presenting about the economy at package 
to affected those people. First, bantuan khas COVID-19 BKC or the other name is bantuan prihatin rakyat BPR. BKC is a direct cash assistance provided by the government to elevate the cost of living and the burden of the people due to the COVID-19 pandemic until the end 2021. Those who are qualified are the hardcore poor, B14 and M14. It can be classified as uh, households, senior citizens and teenagers. Second, Bantuan Kehilangan Pendapatan. Bantuan Kehilangan Pendapatan BKP is the one of the list of government assistance for group B14 for those who lost income due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the implement, implementation of the movement control order nationwide. Next is program bantuan by kul makanan. How to apply for assistance involves applying for a food basket uh, program of 100 for each basket through the Jabatan Kebajikan Malaysia in the Permai 2021 Assistance Scheme. The announcement of the JKM Food Basket program was 100 ringgit Malaysia for each basket given to the eligible households contain all daily necess necessities uh, distributed by the Welfare Department of Malaysia from time to time. Next and last, program Pekerjaan Jangka Pendek MySTEP. It is, it is a program that offers employment opportunities to Malaysians for a short period of time. Two categories are offered by contract in the public sector and in government link companies GLC uh, for example a contract in the public sector is a nurse it can overcome it can overcome the problem of unemployment and create more job as a result of the covid-19 pandemic that hit the world this program can help individuals who have just lost their jobs or fresh graduate who just want to Next is about economics activity that affected during this pandemic, for example, airlines company. Since the introduction of the Movement Control Order, MCO, on 18 March 2020, airline companies nationwide have been forced to halt their operations and ground large parts of their fleets. According to Transport Minister, Malaysia's aviation industry is projected to lose to lose uh, 30 million ringgit this year as air travel continues to face travel restrictions. Malaysia Airlines, which from the beginning of the MCO has scaled down its operation, introduced salary cuts and offered unpaid leave to over 13,000 of its employees, is now undergoing an urgent restructuring exercise to ensure its survival. Economics activity that have benefits during the pandemic COVID-19, for example, food delivery service. If you have ever used an online food ordering application, one of the most obvious benefits from a customer customer standpoint is the seamless process that the application can offer. Online food ordering allows customers to place an order at virtual any time from anywhere, saving the time and resources typically spent on traveling to pick up a meal. During COVID-19, minimal contact hubs protect customers, employees and the public at large from the spread of the virus. But even as that separate as the spread slows, customers may continue to enjoy the minimal contact that online ordering can offer as it can accommodate busy schedules and allow, allows customers to safely send any kind of mail to friends, loved ones and others. Moving on is about the technologies in Malaysia, especially in ICT due to new norm during this pandemic. According to MCMC, there are 88.7% internet users in 2020 which has increased from 2018 and the top 3 devices to access internet are smartphones followed by laptops and desktops that use for communication, entertainment, ODL, telehealth for robotics and drones, um, working from homes and others. Indirectly, it has rose up the performance of e-commerce and online banking activities, especially during MCO as consumers move to online shopping through Shopee, Lazada, and others. Next, my suggestion application was launched in April 2020 and only took 8 weeks to develop. The main function of this mobile application is the detection of close contact of COVID-19 patients through MySejahtera check-in and this function is very user-friendly and in line with the new norm that requires Malaysians to scan a QR code before entering any premises 
and provide personal details to facilitate contact tracking efforts. It also can identify COVID-19 disease risk status through self-health assessment and allows user to monitor COVID-19 hotspot zone via hotspot tracker, especially if there are positive cases within one kilometer radius close to their GPS guided location. In addition, MySejahtera is an information channel used by the MOH to spread update news about COVID-19 cases daily and vaccination program. Last but not least, MySejahtera has won the World Information Technology and Services Alliance Global ICT Excellence Award 2020 and Reader's Digest Gold Quality Service Award 2020. My Sejahtera supports goal three of the SDG, namely good health and well-being. That's all from me. Thank you. COVID-19 will be with us for a long time to come. Maybe it took over five years to fully recover. So the Malaysian government needs to make economic plans to ensure that the country's economy is always in a stable state when the country is in a crisis. According to Sina Harian, Malaysia's economic growth is expected to recover next year, which is in, which is in 2022, due to the effectiveness of the launch of the COVID-19 vaccination program, continued to export movements and increasing momentum in consumption and investment. The first approach is to build resilience through the Prihatin Economic Stimulus Package to improve the capabilities of the people and the economy. The government has allocated more than 800 billion ringgit, namely with eight economic stimulus packages and also the 2021 budget to address the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Second, regenerate or restart the economy in an orderly and controlled manner assist in channeling accurate information regarding their production and business activities. For example, during the PKP period, the production of food supply should not only be sufficient but also no price manipulation in the market. To ensure this is secure, companies or business establishment need to report accurate data and problem so that the immediate action can be taken. Third, implement an economic recovery strategy in the face of the new normal. For example, restructure business strategy. Companies need to take the opportunity to evaluate and restructure their marketing strategies. For example, the marketing of a sales agent based food business is expected to be affected during the PKP period. In this crisis situation, the traditional market marketing method of marketing in supermarkets and stores may be more secure for business continuity. Evaluation of a more flexible employment system. In developed countries, the practice of flexible employment system has been implemented. For example, employees can work a few hours a day, a few days a week, and practice working from home. Fifth, effectiveness of the launch of the COVID-19 vaccination program. According to the investment bank, overall sentiment will be driven by vigorous vaccination efforts, efforts and enable the country to achieve cluster immunity targets by the end of this year. Vaccination programs in Malaysia have reached a rate of almost 85% for all adults. This shows that the country is heading into a recovery, recovery phase and at the same time can improve the country's economy. With high vaccination rates and the strong SOPs, the country will be free of COVID-19 quickly and effectively. After the COVID-19 pandemic is over, the country will continue to develop and restabilize the economy, not only Malaysia but the whole world. In conclusion, Malaysia will recover and develop together like other countries, although it may take a different period of time. The World Bank also, in its projections, expect the Malaysian economy to grow at a rate of 5% next year. So, this clearly shows that Malaysia is not heading towards a, fa a failed state. Although it is clear that Malaysia is not heading towards a failed state, the issues and challenges facing the country at this time, especially the economic, social and mental situation of the people need to be given immediate attention and become the main focus compared to other things. All parties need to be firmly united so that we can win together against this pandemic. That's all for me. Thank you.